Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we discuss everything to do with the stock, crypto and commodities markets right now. And we talk about what's happening after that FOMC meeting minutes that was a bit of a fizzer. And of course the stuff that everybody is looking at, the key levels for all of these markets. There's a lot going on, there's plenty of great trades. And if you're feeling the FOMO and you think you've missed out on any market, don't worry, there's another trade just around the corner. And we've got plenty to discuss today. See you soon. Okay, everyone, well, welcome back to our show covering the daily market activities. This is for the 16th of February, 2022. And obviously, if you like anything to do with stock, cryptos or commodities, please remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you enjoy the video. So from the surface, if we have a look here at the large companies in the S&P 500, it was a bit all over the place. Some things were up, some things were down, nothing much to report there. If we take a look at the broader market, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Obviously, the FOMC meeting minutes were more of the same pretty boring, nothing much in those minutes. But we did end up getting some stagnation coming into the announcement. It was down as much as 1.4%, not quite filling the gap we'd hoped for. And then it rallied. It actually created a double bottom on the small timeframes and rallied straight up to the previous day's resistance. This creates some good trades in the next trading session. And luckily, there's not as much big news coming out so we will most likely see the technicals play out more than anything because the fundamentals aren't really going to change over the next 24 to 48 hours, most likely that is. Let's take a look here at some of the sectors that we're doing best. We've been kind of bullish here on gold, especially over the last week, and it's been doing very well. GDX up 3.2%. One of our other favorites, Jets, having a bit of a breather after what a massive move in the last couple of days and trading sessions. And the rest of the market was all over the place. I wouldn't say there was anything strong here in terms of seasonalities or sector rotations or any of that. Now we did a big special for Nvidia in the previous video. And if you want to, you can go check that out and some of the ways we were doing it. It turns out we were correct, but only kind of. So obviously 90% beat rate, 100% beat rate since 2018. It's hard to fight Nvidia. And they did do amazingly. I listened to the call after the stream that we did here on the channel, and it looked pretty good. I mean, obviously they're, they're expecting incredible growth. They think that they can deal with the supply chain or it's improving every day with their words. And the market looked at it and they went, it's okay. But basically it's still down in after hours. And we'll talk about that later. But Shopify didn't have the best announcement. It was down. And we also saw a few other stocks coming into the, into the close, not very well. DoorDash did well. Fastly did terribly. So we move ahead now to things like Palantir, another one that a lot of retail traders love. Roku, DraftKings on Friday. Not so much that they'll move markets, but they'll certainly be very interesting to watch. I'll quickly just talk about seasonality during midterm election years. If it's your first time here on any of our videos, you will want to just quickly pay attention here. Just remember that 2022 is a midterm election year. They tend to be weak. And what I mean by that is they're up, down and all around. They have great rallies in the midsection throughout history. They have double dips. So they tend to have a dip at the start and a dip in the third quarter, followed by some amazing returns in the fourth quarter into the first quarter of 2023 in this case. And here you can see from 70 years of stats how good it gets. Now, all of these things are very similar to actually what happened in 18. We started to raise rates. Obviously, this time is different. I get that. But you've got to remember that some of the playbook might be very, very similar. So keep your optimism hats on for the market. And while the markets may fall even lower, and we'll talk about that soon, we do still want to be wary of the potential here for a later year massive run. And of course, the mid-cycle run through that April, May period. That can be a very, very good pickup if we get it correct here on the channel. Let's talk about Q4 2021 earnings beat data. It's Still very good, 72%, beats 833, misses 316. But this isn't the hyper kind of activity that we've been seeing in earnings over the last couple of years because now fundamentals are starting to matter again. People care about the earnings and the prices obviously are coming down if they don't really knock the park out in terms of expectations. And lucky for Nvidia traders, they did. The EPS was a lot better. Let's talk about the VIX. The VIX continues to decline here, showing that the volatility is slowly coming out of this market. It can spike at any point. We need to remember anything above 20 is abnormal. And that means that we're in predictive kind of like bearish algorithmic moves at any time. So the VIX continues to decline there. 
Now we haven't always used this indicator, but I thought it'd be worthwhile bringing it up. And this is the percentage of stocks above 50 daily moving average. And it's something that I definitely do consider when it comes to picking up dips. Now you might see why when you have a look here at the horizontal, basically there's been a few times where the market has come down and only 25% of the S&P 500 or the percentage of the stocks on the market are above the 50 day moving average. Now when that happens, sometimes it can really point to markets being oversold. And we've had that a few times now as the market slowed down obviously in December last year and at the same time that 24th of January 2022. So we ended up getting that small rally coming through to the January period. As we know, after that it's all been downhill and at the moment it's currently rallying back up. So it's not so much where it is now that's a concern, but remember if it ever gets to an extreme on the upside or an extreme on the downside, if you can bring that in with your technical analysis, with your key levels on a market index, it can give you a little bit more clarity that maybe based on history, it's a good time to buy. And really during those bigger, deeper sell-offs, where do we look to? We look around that 10% number. So we basically go, okay, how many stocks are above the 50 day at these points? And that becomes that good purchase. It happened in 18 once and it happened again. So remember around 10% is when it gets really extremely low. There was one time it went even crazier and that was the shock. Because remember it's a lagging indicator based on 50 interval days here, 2.29% reading during the March lows. Amazing how low really that pandemic did go with the fear that was coming in the market. So what about the US two year? What about the 10 year? There wasn't much coming out of the FOMC. We still have great resistance here at 1.6 and bears will be looking at that level to break. A lot of people are probably gonna set alerts at 1.6 and if the market goes through this point, maybe that might be a trigger. Let's go look at the QQQ. Let's look at the NASDAQ, the SPY the Russell 2000, maybe there'll be some shorts that come back in. 10 year also is coming up to a big resistance here. We will make a video very soon talking about what actually is the big concern here on these yields. And it's not so much just the yields themselves, it's also another thing that often precurses a recession or a larger pullback in the markets. And it, it's pretty damn good at picking. It usually picks around 12 months early and we haven't currently seen it, but we will bring that macro kind of discussion in on these videos very, very soon. So US 10 year and all of that was fine. Now for anyone that took the gold trade yesterday, congratulations to you. It worked out to a T, though if you were watching it, you might have been a little bit terrified. So 1857 was obviously our entry point in terms of the way that we thought about the market. We had our resistance here. We were looking for the entry point, we got it, and we obviously would have placed our stop loss below the last low. Now at one point it looked a bit terrifying. However, it went on to rally and congrats, it hit the 1870 as we had hoped, creating a rally throughout all of the gold stocks and a nice rally obviously here on gold. Now for any trader that's been looking at gold, you might think, well, Tom, why the hell are we even looking at gold? It's been so boring for a while. Gold does tend to perform relatively well in interest rate hiking environments, at least temporarily. And that's part of the reason why people are looking at it. Plus it can be seen, even if it goes sideways on you in an investment, it's still probably gonna outperform the market during these rising rate environments, during this big up, down, and all around kind of conditions. So gold, that's part of the reason I think people are moving back into it. The trade also just looks a lot hotter than it used to. 1870 is the key resistance. If we breach through that, we look for a pullback back to 1870, previous resistance acting as support, could be a great trade over the next 24 to 48 hours, and 1910, the next level. The only reason I really like gold so much is because it's starting to break out of some key zones that it's been sluggish in for a while. And remember, when you can recognize that this is happening, you enter into a point where participation occurs. Just remember this, when everyone's not looking at a market, if you can recognize that market is improving based on your technical analysis, wouldn't you want to potentially be there before everybody else gets involved? That's what TA is really doing. It's helping you to find things before everybody starts talking about them in the news, the elevator, be warned. If it's in the elevator, that's a bad sign. Probably get out now, get out guys. <laughs> Warning of bells everywhere. But that's what you're really wanting to be doing. We want to make sure that we can get it before other people and, and get that participation level. So 1870, 1910, certainly an interesting zone. And gold's finally coming good for many people in the rooms. Now we also been bearish on oil in recent days. 
And the reason why is all to do with the weekly. It's 18.5% away from the weekly 20 moving average, and it's not looking too good. Now, a few people have actually shorted this from the highs. Congrats if you're in that short, I guess, at the time being. Obviously, practice your risk management because shorting ain't easy. But here we have a trend line, and that trend line just got breached on the four hour. Now, I like looking at all the time frames breaching a trend line, such as the four hour, the eight hour. But if you look at this on a chart, it's not looking that positive. The four hour 20 moving, a 50 moving average has also been very good at keeping it above which is over here. The trend line has breached down. I'm not positive on oil for now. Now, everybody's also seeing, notice the banks, what have they just done? Everyone said, oh, we see oil at $100. We see oil at $106. Yeah, maybe, but all of these big banks have just come out with these massive calls at around this level. And guess what this level is? It's excess phase in the market. That's the point that you don't want to necessarily be in. If you look at any normal technical analysis and you go over to a weekly 20 moving average, that's an obscene level away from this point. It's too hard, too fast, too quickly. And when you move that quickly away, what tends to happen? This type of thing. So I think oil could easily re kind of come back down to 85. Some of you might cheer that because at that point, what are we looking at? We're looking at a cheaper, level of fuel at the pump station, cheap or gas as Americans would call it. And we want that because you know it's better also for the stock market. If oil doesn't run off and go crazy, it is better overall for the health. But speaking of stocks, before we go into indices and cryptos, let's look at some of our favorite stocks. It was a bit of a lackluster day on Tesla, realistically eking out a 0.1% and post market only doing 0.28. That's not that great. So we don't really like what Tesla's done in the session, but I think a lot of that's just because the market itself kind of sucked. It wasn't doing enough. It it went down and then rallied. The FOMC meeting sucks. The meeting minutes were terrible. Like no one really talked about anything. And we don't really have a strong catalyst towards the buy unless you're talking about the tension stuff that's going on in the Ukraine. Volume is also down on Tesla. So it remains really this. If we breach 945, Maybe, I think Tesla's gonna go crazy. I think that's a very key level. This, this zone here is gonna be nuts. If we have an inkling that we're getting through this daily 20 moving average, also a great first sign. Some people might scale into positions there, but this currently isn't showing us the signs of, oh, I love this stock, it's so good. And a bit of that's got to do with Tesla seasonality as well. So I've just pulled out here the seasonality of the last 11 years for Tesla. Now you might think, okay, well that March sell-off is just because of 2020. Tom, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. But Tesla tends to have incredible performance in the mid-year, which goes back to that idea of what we see after an earnings. It kind of goes lackluster for a period. The market itself in technology doesn't do that well. And then it has that spurt when everyone kind of loses the faith. Tesla long-time hodlers will know what I mean. What happens is everybody goes FOMO, which we saw a lot of coming into earnings, then the FUD, then more FUD. We're seeing news creating FUD about the whole self-driving cars. And then all of a sudden things turn around. So I could be looking, and I, I think this is very possible. Obviously day traders will be looking at the 950 regardless, it doesn't matter. But for longer term kind of multi-month traders, if we get a turnaround and then that turnaround starts at the back end of March into April, amazing returns can happen through the mid-year for Tesla. And I think that's a cool seasonality chart to bring up. Let's talk over Nvidia. So we were partially right, partially wrong, as I mentioned before. Was it at technical resistance? Yes. Did the earnings beat? Well, yes, 100% of beats have happened since 2018 and, and Nvidia has a massive, massive beat rate history. I think it's 90% plus. The thing was though, it had to beat and it had to beat by a lot and it did. It actually lived up to expectations. I listened to the earnings call, it was mostly positive, but the problem is the valuation on this stock and that's why we detailed it in the previous video and we shared a bit of a seasonality in the previous session. You can come and check it out also on Twitter. We've covered it over here and the seasonality kind of pointed towards some weakness in We shared the seasonality over here on Twitter and the seasonality kind of pointed to some weakness throughout midterm years. Obviously we saw these midterm years in the past for Nvidia, obviously it's different, but in the past haven't been so good. So conversely, something like 
Tesla has done well, whereas Nvidia has underperformed. And they've given great insights. They've basically said they're going to do the same thing. Nothing looks bad on the surface, but at the same time, the price is expensive. It's still trading at a higher than ever before PE, PS ratio, and all these things. And you might say fundamentals don't matter. They kind of do in this market, not in the market in 2020 or 2021, but in this market, they kind of do. And then it's just a valuation concern more than an overall quality of the business. Let's talk about gold again, just GDX here. I wanted to bring it up only because we've seen such amazing runs here in terms of the last couple of days. It's been pretty nice. We obviously talked about the weekly close. Since that point, gold has rallied on the GDX here. We've got this downward trend, which is sitting around 234.50, I think, in terms of resistance. And then we've got the 35. Now for longer term gold traders, if it breaches this zone, get ready because it could be pretty damn cool. And especially considering that the stocks themselves are undervalued versus the spot. So when the hype comes back in, you'll find the stocks end up doing a lot better than the spot itself just because it really ends up lagging. This can also go against the market. So just remember trend line, resistance, we'll continue to follow it. We'll see how it plays out. And most of it is got to do with actually gold spot going up as well. IWM, yeah, it's doing nothing. It's in the middle of our overall potential of a flag down. We're looking for it to go past 210 and that to show us the broad market is improving overall. We know this is a Wyckoff distribution. So effectively we've got this top end area, obviously the resistance, and then we see that sell off down here. This could be a flag. If it is, this is the length. Now the reason why is because the last two moves have been the same distance. So it's kind of pointing out that there's a possibility here for another leg down. And as the market is allowed now to act its own way, which is technically, with this is where the bears will try to get control. The Fed stuff was trash. We don't know what's really happening exactly in the economy. Most things are pointing towards the negative side from many perspectives, but the price action will show us the way. And hopefully that's gonna be allowed to play out. So we'll keep watching IWM for that flag indication if it does end up occurring. Let's move over to the QQQ. So we're trading here post a little bit down 355. This was a nothing burger day. I mean, you can see it resistance, resistance. The only trade through the session was if you managed to spot this little nice base. And if you were day trading and you didn't get into a little scaled position around here, I'm not sure what you did do during the session. I mean, I hope, I hope you were looking at it and recognizing this was a cool base. Coming off this little bit of resistance, that's a nice base. It breaches through and then it rallies into the end of the day. Actually, there was an initial sell-off here and I wouldn't blame them. I mean, that is a great take profit zone. But where did we close? Right in that point. So this really means that for the bulls to get control here, they've got to slam it through this high and then you're no doubt usually going to see a pullback and when you get that pullback, that's where people will also re-enter into the position. So that's the bull case. The bear case is just like a sell off from here. I mean, it's their last point. If bears can't push the market down, think about what's happening on the spy. The spy has theoretically a double top in it. It has a support level that's very strong. It's at that support becomes resistance level. If it breaches high, what's it telling the rest of the market? It's saying, hey, you know, we're long. At that point, you've got your lightning bolt, you've got your trough, you've got your peak, you've got your higher trough, and you get your higher peak. You're at the precipice of things going bullish. So for bears, it's time to get control of this market. We need to push underneath here if that's what you want to do. And once that happens, back down to the lows, 435, and obviously we go test the 430, 425. I think a lot of this is pulling in options both ways. So let's look at the option strike for the end of the week. Now, it could be lackluster because when you think about it, where's Max Payne? It's sitting around that 448, 450 level in terms of SPY options. That is, if everything expired at 450, they would make the most money, that being Wall Street. We know the base, which we've always said is around 425, 430. If it was to get underneath, there was way too many puts entered, but they've managed to extract an extra amount of calls into the close of the week. So I think the market's playing a bit silly with everyone right now. It's not the easiest thing to read. And you'll notice at the time of this recording, we actually are seeing a turnaround here in the futures. Now this is only just the beginning if it does end up shorting off. We've got a little bit of rejection here off the resistance. In the next session, 
we should get direction. And that's a should because the technicals are allowed to play out. This isn't about the FOMC. It's not about anything anymore. It's just purely the fight between the price action, the bulls and the bears. Let's move over to the crypto markets. They rallied off the FOMC minutes a little bit here. So you can see the rally there, 44 and a half, still too much for the crypto market for now. And we really just continue to rear at the same point. You get through 46,000, 52,000 should be on. And there are many reasons why this will be the big deal because you'd breach the 20 moving average on the weekly at that point. You'd break through what is a giant shooting star pin bar rejection candle, a bearish looking candle with no follow through. That's the key here. If it ends up getting up and going through there, I feel like crypto is back and it's kind of gonna trade like gold. It might perform or outperform the actual stock market relatively well. And that's something that you're looking for this to do. And Bitcoin's gonna lead the way on this one. Ethereum getting approval, I believe, to be used on the tip process for Twitter. Didn't really do anything to it, but uh, it looks like Jack Dorsey, well, not Jack Dorsey anymore. They've now allowed the idea of Ethereum in the tip jar. Uh, in terms of levels, there's nothing much going on. We've still got the same thing with Bitcoin and this 3,300 to 3,400 breach past that zone. Okay, cool. The FUD's over and the FOMO begins for the crypto markets. There's not too much big news coming out. Obviously, tensions in Europe could be the real big clincher here in terms of markets. I think the price action will direct us over the next 24 to 48 hours. Let's hope so it does. And remember to be safe and always practice being nimble and fast out there. Please subscribe if you enjoy the videos and of course, smash that like button if you did. Bye for now.